El Timoi Otakenge. My name is Kuma Wenze from Mboka Nazambi Ikara. And today I'm going to discuss um, some ideas or translation, I should say, of some ideas coming to Iboga in terms of their preparation, people, and what to actually do with that. Like, how do we actually prepare? And it wouldn't be what a lot of us are thinking it would be like. Um, that's why I'm here with this transmission. <clears throat> there isn't a preparation per se, other than someone understanding something principally from a position of antiquity, such as the Babongo originators of the Bwiti tradition, to understand how to bridge the knowledge of Iboga through the spirituality of Bwiti to the aspirant coming to Iboga. So it's more of an understanding, and I have attempted to do this, and I continue to do such, every day, all day long. The Western mind, this is what we're going to address now, the Western mind pretty much wants to control everything, and is so lost <clears throat> in primarily its good deeds, that it cannot see that until it's relinquished every last one of those thoughts that it uses for dependency, <clears throat> Will it ever understand what a boga is going to do for you? Now, no matter how much I've said this, it's still up to the aspirant to understand. But all we can do is furnish with, with you with enough information so you can reap what you sow with this work in the connection to Zambekana, God in self, through the soul's intersection with the flesh, which is the journey of Iboga. So, in terms of this um, preparation, for a lack of a better word, we need to have a look at something very quickly. We ask the question now, <clears throat> and everyone needs to dive into this if you're interested, why are you coming to Iboga? Now, don't stop there. Don't create any conclusions, because you'll stop investigating. You'll find that on the surface you have issues that you just want resolved and out of the way. <clears throat> but these aren't the true cause of what's going on. The true cause, no matter what someone tells me here, whether they're an, an outstanding exemplary, supposed exemplary human being functioning in society, these people still are using those very notions, those accolades and ambition and striving and success and envy and com competition in their, gu their guise to actually validate, validate their reality, which is a dependency. And if it's explored, you'll see that they're so scared to stop doing those very activities for fear of their mental um, acuity completely becoming dissolute. Now they are no different, and for all of you out there thinking that you're different from someone that's on a fentanyl addiction in the street, you are not. From a Gunga's perspective, if you are coming from any dependency, and there's not anyone that I've ever met through this line of work here, outside of my village in Africa that doesn't have these dependencies. It might be talking on the phone like me now to you. And that's making me feel better because I'm externalizing my fears. But what you need to understand is when you're talking to a Gunga, he can't be in that position. I've been put here and overseen by a Nima, a high master, a king in our case, who's already exuded and demonstrated the qualities of not an external process, but understanding the universal processes and understanding where his own avoidances and dependencies lie. So I'm talking and walking what I'm saying to you completely. So let's look at this. If you're coming here, you need to understand that you are already, by ringing me, by contacting me, you're already running. You see? So have a look at this. You're running. You can't sit still long enough to sit in that fear, which would bring exceptional knowledge and clarity as to why it exists and would possibly demonstrate to you your inseparability with your environment, except you make that first movement away and instantly when you do that, you are now divided, separate and confused and lost in the world of the illusion of thought. 
No amount of thinking about your environment or this experience in this case will alter this experience. This is ideation and conceptualization, but that is not what you're looking at. What you're looking at is pure awareness as one whole movement. So I'm trying to actually reach people here to have a close look. So you've run to come here. Good. Okay. At this point, that's my job. Is like I'm going to show that, you, that you're doing this. So we can possibly, you might say now, well, what's the point of a boga? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So this is what we're about to go into next. If we can already do this without a boga, what is a boga really about? Because number one, I'll say this to you now, I've said it before. There is not another outlet anywhere that you will hear the true teachings of a boga like this. And if you do, it would be in response to it and plagiarism. I'm telling you how this works according to our deep tradition, broken down and deconstructed as a bridge between the spiritual and physical world, the world of antiquity and modernity, which is my job. I'm saying until you understand that you're fearful, you can't sit with your boga. You must sit in the fear. Now we have people come here and continue to squander the deep, power of Iboga's energy, which is sitting right in your presence and it's elevating every single last dependency you have until it's right in your face. So you can learn to sit with it and watch and learn the immeasurable, the thing that I can't explain to you, that you are the very thing you're experiencing. Only then can you have a realization beyond the concepts and ideas of which I'm even expressing now, of what you really are. And then you can start to hear what Iboga does. You'll see that it removes that. You can understand the electricity, the awareness, and what you really are. Not just I went home and I had a small five-minute relief or a five-day relief or a one-year relief of my issue, and then I just repeated the issue. That's 100% of the people that come to any plant medicine. For, if I was wrong, why do they continue to go? This is a major problem, not just in the field of Iboga, and this is my primary concern, of course, because it is our tradition. I want people to understand how to come to Iboga. For Iboga cannot cure stupidity. It can embellish upon the fact that you're stupid, but can it not cure that? What it's doing is galvanizing and demonstrating what you really are for you to have the realization at which then entangles or enmeshes you with its power to allow you to continue that work of observance continually and that means letting go of everything including your want for plant medicine your want to be connected your want to do yoga you must be free anyone listening to this now you're all doing things watch what you're doing all of you your day to day they're all fear driven every single one of them whether it's yoga whether it's writing whether it's connecting it's all fear all of it and one person's fear is not different from another's fear is fear there's only one mind The fear of a child down the road that they're going to be bombed by a warplane from the US is the same fear you have about coming to a burger. No different. Fear kills. Fear paralyzes. And until we sit in it, we will continually run. And you can come to a burger quite easily. And I've watched many people work with the burger, and they're all around us right now that are fear, full of fear, and they're feeding you a burger. No one will obtain those direct, succinct sensations of awareness that will actually free you from fear forever until they come to somewhere where someone is actually doing what they say, i.e. here, Manga and I, my village, Bokonazambe, my king, his majesty, Adumangana, and my Babongo brothers and sisters in Dibwa. No one will obtain that truth if they're going outside of these teachings this is not about a business model because this is not a business this is a sacrament that should never be sold I'm talking about something here very very important that is beneficial for humanity and brotherhood of man and these words need to be understood if you're coming to Iboga you must be ready and listen to the Ganga and you must understand that this is not about continually squandering the energy Iboga is giving you by escaping into pretty thoughts, visions and other things that are allowing you to move away 
because 100% of the people I'm discovering here, and no matter how much, and I'm never going to stop until they get this, 100% of them during their time here at Aboga, every time, will just find another convenient way to swap that fear for another one and then give themselves the illusion that they've fixed that first one. They have not. They've continued and protracted the running from fear and wasting Iboga's energy. By swapping your fear for yoga, for meditation, for drugs, for helping someone in the street, for becoming a healer, all is all dependency and you have not fixed your fear. I'm looking to cut out all of this nonsense so you can really learn to sit because in that sitting, there's a realization that not one human being I'm yet to meet has actually is doing it and living. There's a realization in there of complete eradication of every single inkling of fear on the planet and brings you into wholeness and God in self. The deepest of realizations that instantly frees an individual from the illusion that they are separate from the things around them. This is what Iboga wants. It's at the pinnacle. It can be reduced to everything else, beyond everything else. Everything else is an abstraction about Iboga. All of the information you're reading online, all of these people, the way they're selling it, their claims, everything else, it's all complete fucking bullshit. All of it. The one truth is you must learn to sit with that and develop the awareness of where you are escaping, avoiding, and trying to continue yourself, where you've become important, where you've become the me or the I. The moment you become me or I, you are different from other things and you're in illusion of thought, which cannot be overcome without the complete stoppage of that event and sitting within the very fact and acknowledging I am that fear. That is what Iboga is. I want everyone to understand, God, there's freedom just around the corner. If we could possibly drop for one minute our ridiculous notions of preparation for a plant medicine. Because the fact is, and, and I've said this before, no amount of preparation is actually going to allow an individual to ride Iboga better. It's only going to allow them to escape it. So do not try to prepare anything and only trust from someone who is actually walking this. Because there is nothing coming out of my mouth right now that isn't first from King Adumangana and isn't first watched over in vision and development, auditing process of myself to demonstrate the true action, which is observance and knowledge that I am fear, I am pain, I am doubt. Until you can realize and turn yourself on that, you will not be free. And when you do do that with your boga, you will burgeon into new depths and understandings of health. You will not waste your burger's work. So may Zambe Kana shine his light through all of you. May we all come to realize the truth that there is only spirit. The spiritual world is first. Everything's born of this. There's enough information out there for you to understand. If you can't understand the spiritual rhetoric, certainly look towards your physics or your quantum physics or your science and you'll see some semblance of it, albeit being controlled. May everyone be blessed. And if you're thinking to coming to Iboga, really listen to this text and extend out to me. Ask questions. I'm here to assist everyone. This is an effort and a transmission for the planet. I am trying to get every single last human being to sit in their own thing until they discover that they are that so we can create peace truly because it will not happen by continually running from the one fear. So turn yourself inward deeply for your uh, ideas of preparation.